Hey guys, how are you doing? In this video, I'll be answering some of the questions I've gotten after making the video on relocating to Malta via the nomad permit. And also, I'll be clarifying some of the things that might come up as you are doing your application. Okay, so let's get to it. So guys, this video is with respect to a previous video of mine where I explained how you can migrate to Malta via the digital nomad route which only requires you to either be a business owner, an entrepreneur, a freelancer or an employee of a company that allows you to work from any location you want. And the only other requirements you need to meet to be eligible for this route is being able to make at least 2,700 euros per month. So if you've not watched the video, it will be better you watch it before getting back to this one so you grab everything I'm saying here. And since this is going to be a long one, I'm going to put time codes in sections and add the titles so that you might skip to the particular question that concerns you or that you are interested in, okay? One of the questions I've gotten a lot is, can a business owner or an entrepreneur or a freelancer apply for the Malta Nomad visa? Yes. I know I have a video where I explained everything about applying for Nomad visa of any country, not just Malta. Telling you as a business owner, you can apply for the Nomad permit or uh, as a freelancer. Business owner I mean here is you are an entrepreneur, you have your own business, even if it's an online business or so one that you travel to different places to do. So as someone that falls into this category and you want to apply for the Malta Nomad Permit, what you need to do is, first of all, you need to, as a business owner, first of all, you need to make sure that your business is registered. A couple of people have reached out to me asking like, they don't have, their business is not registered. Maybe you are doing, you travel to different places to achieve your business, maybe to different countries but your business is not registered i know we have a lot of people in nigeria for instance that don't have their businesses registered so for this um i emailed the mortar agency i emailed them to know if they can apply without registering their business they said you can apply but your business has to be registered because that's the only way you can prove that yeah you're a business owner and you are the owner of this business so the only thing i suggest for you to do here as someone that is a business owner and your business brings for you at least two thousand seven euros monthly then you are qualified and you also know that your business is not just like it's not like a store or something that is located physically in your home country but let's say your store is maybe it's an online store or you travel to different part of the world to do some transactions to own business you are qualified yeah you're eligible now what i advise for you to do in this case if you don't have your business registered is to just register it i will put the link for maybe for nigerians that want to register their businesses because you can't your business shouldn't be registered in malta if you are moving to malta as a nomad your business has to be registered elsewhere it has to be registered maybe in your home country or some other place so if you want to register your business in nigeria for instance i don't think it costs so much not that i don't think it doesn't cost so much i don't know the actual amount you have to pay but i still don't think it's up to hundred thousand naira if you're in Nigeria so you can just um, register your business and stand a chance to apply okay the second question I want to answer in this video is kind of similar to the first one which is a lot of people asking me if it's only tech people that are eligible for this type of visa no not at all so anything any work you are doing as an employee that can be achieved 100% remote. That's all. Same thing applies for freelancers. Anything at all you are doing, you just need to make that minimum salary requirement. And the answer to that is yes. You can travel with your dependents immediately as, a, as someone that is relocating via this nomad route. But I think you have to prove 
some extra income per dependent i'm not sure because my friend that relocated with his family he didn't need to prove any extra stuff but i'm guessing because he already makes way more than 2007 euros so he didn't need to show again since since they already saw what he's earning but i've also searched there is no one i didn't see anything on the official website for the nomad for Malta nomad people and i didn't include it in the email as well but i've also seen online where people are saying that that you should prove additional 255 euros that's 255 euros per dependent i mean for some other countries they specify for any extra dependent you are bringing you should add maybe 300 euros to the 27 or stuff but i didn't see anything like that for Malta, so i don't know if that's really a strict requirement let's say you are coming with your spouse your spouse is uh, your spouse is not allowed to work with that dependent visa so you say your spouse want to work in Malta. what they need to do is just find the job apply for the job get the job then they give you work permit which is even better you know because with the work permit if this is just like me telling you but with the work permit even your normal permit like after one year you can just like use your spouse's work permit you are now the dependent and you guys are working you know so i think that's cool right guys I really needed to clarify this one because most of the questions were coming in this direction like can I come to Malta in two weeks I will get a job and start working as a nomad the answer is no you can know you can know migrate via this route which is a digital nomad route where you migrate you get your nomad permit you can no work without your nomad permit with that id card no you're not allowed to work in malta because you already told them you yeah, are you're working with so 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 company or you have business here and there so they already know you you are working so you come in here thinking that you will just use the permit and start working no that's very unlikely so if your plan is let's say you want to come here and when you get here you find a job and start working here then just have in mind that once you get here and you should also be considering the timelines right you you get here you do your biometrics immediately uh, immediately you get to Malta after your biometrics it takes about two weeks or max three weeks for your ID card to come out once your ID card comes out let's say you are a student or let's say you are a worker then that's when you can start work but as a nomad permit holder you can't work the only thing you can do if you really want to find a job in Malta and work is that you can just maybe keep doing what you were doing and you start looking for job in Malta but once you get the job in Malta you have to apply for work permit it's not you that will apply anyway your employer would apply for your work permit and once they apply for your work permit the nomad because you of course you can't have two statuses um in malta so your nomad permit has to go for your work permit to come alive <laughs> so you have to switch to work but also mind you i need to also clarify this because a lot of people are thinking that maybe they will come in two weeks they get their car they get job and start working maybe in four weeks no it's not realistic the reason why i'm saying it's not realistic is because getting work permit in malta it's actually a long process it's not that what I mean by this is in once you apply you get you've gotten a job and all your employer will apply for the work permit but it takes time for the card to come out it doesn't the, the nomad permit is like premium or something like that so it comes out fast but the work permit and study card all of them takes time so you have to wait for wait for about three months actually to get your work permit and sometimes because the card is not out you might not be able to work it depends actually i know some people as long as the process as long as the process is already in progress you can start work you get but i don't know i don't know in how it will work exactly i don't know in your case if an employer would want to be paying you why it's in process then that's now your discussion with the employer but i just want to let you know that the work permit 
takes time to come out so don't think that you can migrate immediately as a nomad and start working the next month it's usually difficult like that but of course if you have some hand work I'm, I mean I've mentioned it in my previous video that if you have some hand works you can start making money immediately I mean the person is paying you cash so nobody knows you are performing some transactions or if you can find people from your place like that can give you some work that you're doing that would just require require them pay you cash i mean we have a lot of jobs that would you would go they would maybe pay you cash and you are working you are earning nobody knows that you're actually working so that would work for you actually but don't just get your hopes high that you can come and you find a standard job immediately with the normal permit no you have to switch to work and it takes quite some time okay guys if you are looking for the health insurance to show when you are um, submitting your documents or or if you watched my previous video where i mentioned that you can use janky janky health insurance to show us your um, health insurance coverage i don't think they accept it anymore because i asked someone that reached out to me that he messaged the mortar agency and they said that they don't take janky anymore i don't know why they stopped taking it but i'm guessing because you know janky um is mostly for people that explore the um maybe different countries all the time so i don't know i just don't know why they stopped using it but actually i have a, um, some better ones i mean some that are cheaper and that are also specific to mortar so i have these ones and also still cover internationally depending on the plan you go for right but i'll be sharing the links with you um i have one la fella so i told um i told the person to check it out and he liked it and also we have one gas mama or something but i will put the links for you in the description of this video so you will check them out and just choose the one that works for you but they are way cheaper than the one i mentioned in the previous video and also it's acceptable in mortar that's what even locals here use and i'm planning on switching i'm in the process of switching to one of them now so you should check it out okay even if you are even if even if you are migrating as a student it's still you can still use them okay for accommodation in malta as a nomad you are looking for the accommodation that you submit to the embassy to the agency that yeah here is where i will be staying like i said previously if you're getting your accommodation in malta you have two options to like the way you if you want to submit to the agency you have two options number one option is you can show them a, a temporary accommodation that's just like a one month um accommodation for where you would stay when you land the mortar to now find your lease or to now find the one the permanent place you'll be staying so for this one month place after getting your approval you can just find the place and submit to them they will give you your visa and everything but when you get to mortar before you're able to get your permit your normal permit you now have to find the actual place you'll be staying the second option is you are in your home country you are applying for the visa and everything then you want to show everything immediately so that once you get to mortar you go straight and get your permit so this one is now like you are get, you are in your home country and you are getting the apartment for one year because you have to prove that this is a one year contract. So if you are getting it for from your home country, that's quite risky because you've not even seen the place with your own eyes. So you don't know how it is. You don't know if you would like it for a long term stuff. So but if you want to get it, it's just you finding an apartment and signing the lease and everything they will give you your one month your one year lease and the lease is actually like you paying um you'll be paying monthly but you have to first of all pay the deposit so paying the deposit deposit is usually like one month rent a mortar okay so you pay the deposit maybe pay the agency fee if you got it through an agent so once you pay this they will sign the contract you will sign and they will send it over you will now submit the document as well 
but my advice would be for the temporary own i think that would be better for you to get maybe an airbnb or a hotel but you can also go to the facebook group that's where people find apartments even my current apartment is there a facebook marketplace that um you can find your place in mortar mostly that's that's just the popular one so when you get there you find the apartment you can just find the one month you can find a one month apartment somewhere you can just stay temporary just one month i don't know it could be for you can get it for maybe 400 500 600 depending on where you want to stay depending on how it is or if you will share with some other people or maybe the place could place could be like a hostel so once you get it you pay they will send over the documents then you submit it this way you'll be staying when you get to Malta before you now find the actual lease and once you find the actual lease that's where you can get your permit okay and also getting your actual lease is still the same thing it's still the same facebook that you go but now when you now find a place you book appointment with the agent you go and see the place um to know if you like it and now start the process you pay your deposit you pay the house rent you start paying the rent from the first day of your moving right so once you pay the rent you are free you move in and the document the contract is what you submit and most times after signing the contract you're signing that yeah you stay in this apartment for at least a year so that deposit is what is now like is the security deposit so if you now move out before the contract ends you might now be required to forfeit the deposit or sometimes the contract might be like you have to stay there at least six months before you move out even if you want to move out and get your deposit back you should have stayed in the apartment for at least six months so it just depends on what the contract says or what you also suggest and propose you guys will of course discuss the contract i mean with the landlord so that's how the accommodation works here and for the price you can get as low as 400 euros per month you can get as high as 700 euros per month if you are sharing let's say you guys are coming in pairs you have your friends you are coming together you can just get um, a three bedroom apartment and that's even cheaper you can get three bedroom apartments in maybe a good location not i don't mean like high high location but you can get it from about maybe 900 1000 one two you share it you share the amount and it will be like a good place good apartment but let's say you don't know anybody you can still get a shared accommodation where you'll be paying maybe 300 after dividing the stuff but you can still get like somewhere that you will stay alone but you'll be sharing the toilet and the kitchen with other people you can still get it for about three something four something five something depending um some people even share beds and that one might now be two something so it depends on what you want and what you are going for and also the location you are looking at okay also someone asked me if let's say you mixed submitting one document before making your application if they would deny your application or if they will get back to you that you didn't submit everything and the answer to that is yeah let's say you missed missed one because that happened to me actually i missed submitting one of the forms i didn't even feel it i didn't maybe i forgot to download it i can't remember but i didn't even submit it so they after submitting my application they got back to me that i'm missing one document so that i need to submit it before they proceed so i had to see uh, apologize and like um, i downloaded the documents from the website and i filled it and i sent it back before they started processing my um my stuff and the assurance because the person is also saying um what's the acceptance rate that's what's the approval rate it's quite high it's very high i've never actually seen anybody they denied as long as you meet with the minimum requirements if you don't meet the minimum requirements like your salary and stuff as soon as you make the application they might tell you that you are um you, you are not eligible and that's it it will not get to the visa state before they deny you or so no they'll just tell you that you are not eligible for this permit so for this you know guys i want to appreciate you for subscribing to my channel and liking my videos and also if you've not subscribed to the channel i would appreciate if you consider subscribing as i will keep making helpful content for you okay yes 
some people want to know the exchange rates let's say naira to euro exchange rate they might use to uh, to measure your income um i don't actually know and i also emailed them to find out they didn't give me a standard answer they didn't give me a straight up answer so i don't know the rate they use so what i'm thinking is they don't actually have like a standard rate so they might maybe use google to check what's the rate i don't know or maybe i know uk use oanda.com they could maybe check for official listing and they might use it i don't know but they didn't give me any straight up answer but you should also know that if you are making close to that in naira you should be aware all right or in your country currency you should know that you are this close to this and once you are able to show yeah it's, it's around that or something i don't know but I'm just thinking that when you are making two seven equivalent you will know you will know okay and how do you pay for your visa you pay through bank transfer like i was given the account statement i went to the bank and i transferred from my own account just make sure that when you are paying from for this visa is from your own account it shouldn't be from someone else's account it should be from your own account it's required okay and also the bank statement you are showing should also be yours yeah yeah somebody was asking me if you can use someone else's account no you are showing them you are proving to them you are trying to prove to them that you make minimum of this so of course the income should be from your own account so you should show your own account not someone else's account okay also guys concerning the bank statement you are showing a lot of people also reached out asking me the amount that they want to see in your bank statement when you are showing it that's a three months bank statement that you show and after sending them an email they said that there is no specific amount that they have that should be in your account while submitting the bank statement so from their answer i grabbed that what they might be interested in is just seeing that since you said let's say you're an employee and you said you are making at least 2007 euros right so they just want to see that every month in those three months that those money the 2007 euros sorry enters your account that's what they want to see because of course you spend money even if they pay you salary you spend it right so they just want to see that it's frequent entering your account in those three months even as a business owner you are doing business they want to see that in your business account that you are submitting that has your name of course that the two seven euros at least enters monthly so that's what they need to verify okay the premium visa depends on the country the country are coming from might not be qualified for the premium visa process you get because me i applied from nigeria and i was qualified to go for the premium someone missing me from uk to know if they could go for the premium visa and i i just i told them that i don't really know but you are not the one that would initiate the premium visa process after making um after getting the approval submitting your documents and everything the the embassy the agency would tell you the normal agency would tell you that the premium people the motor central visa unit would reach out to you for the premium visa process because that's how you would be able to send your um to send your passport and all but maybe if you are coming from the uk uk should have a Maltese embassy and stuff so you might not be able to go through the premium process it might be like you go to the embassy submit your passport and stuff you get so it just depend on your location and guys i want to say again that i'm not an agent okay i'm not an agent for this nomad stuff or study stuff i'm just sharing the information with you okay i know a lot of people have been asking me like maybe for one-on-one -on -one or you know to help them with the process so me helping you with the process is this video i'm making for you right so i don't have time i still have like a full-time job i'm doing and some other things so i don't really have time to be doing one-on-one -on -one with everybody but if you have any question that you want to ask i have my email and my instagram on 
in the description where you can ask me your question but i actually prefer that you ask your question in the comment section because i might get to it faster but if you reach me via email or instagram let's say you have series of questions to ask that's still fine but i'm not giving out my personal details like maybe my phone number or whatsapp and also if really you can't do it on your own you can't do it yourself maybe it's stressful for you or maybe you don't have um or maybe you don't have the time or you can't just navigate it and you really want me to do it for you then you have to pay a token i don't know but you have to pay a token for me to really find time to dedicate to doing that okay i just want to say it but i'm still encouraging you to do it yourself because i mean all these videos i'm making is for you to do it yourself but i get if you still can do it yourself and you can still ask me some questions okay one of the few other questions i want to answer in this video is like people asking me about tech if they can migrate how they how they can get a job the truth is in nigeria we, we don't have a lot of companies that would pay you that but you can still apply for remote jobs which now come with some skills okay and people are now already asking what skill can i adopt what can i how what field can i go into i mean everything doesn't have to be tech like i already said right but i still have some video that explained everything about how you can switch to tech from like you don't have to code it's not you coding but we still have some other fields in tech that you can switch to without you spending one year learning all the all the coding stuff okay so you can check out the video and know if that's for you if you can adopt that and maybe learn some skill and start applying for remote jobs and also i have people asking me all the time like do they need to maybe print out the document because one of the documents there in the in the nomad documents that you need to fill would require you to sign and for you to sign they will specify that you should use blue ink to sign that's blue pen right so some people are not asking do they feel because you have to fill the form tight you have to type it not right so so they're not saying should i feel print it out sign and scan it before sending no that's a long process okay so what you should do is after filling the document on your phone or your laptop you can sign you just go to where they are signing free um handwriting or something you go there you just change the color to blue and sign with it that's okay change the color to blue and sign i'm just recommending some apps that you can use on your phone like adobe you can use adobe but it's the paid version that might give you that but i use documents for iphone i don't know if um i don't know if the app is also in google play store but it's in apple store so that means it should be on google play store as well but the name is documents the name of the app you can download it and do everything with the free version you sign your document you do everything for the documents i know i mentioned in the video that one of the documents you would submit is the whole pages of your international passport so that's just you snapping it snapping it but if let's say you're using an iphone I, sorry i don't know much about like if there is a scanner free scanner for android but you can check it out if you use android phone but like an iphone you go to the notes app you will see the scan scan document so you can use it and be snapping and scanning but you are snapping the whole pages of your international passport after snapping it is already together in a, in, in a pdf format because you have to submit the document in a pdf summer format but let's say you don't have any scanner or anything on your phone you can still snap with your camera just make sure it's neat it's clear after snapping you go online you can check how to change your images to pdf so once you get it's, it's free online so once you get there you upload the, um, um, the whole images you snapped and it gets it will get changed it will get converted for you in a pdf format just it will be multiple pages plenty of pages but it will it should be it should be a raw file a raw pdf file so that's what you are submitting as the whole pages of your international passport okay and for your flight 
I've said it before. You can book your flight from Nigeria to Malta. There's no direct um there's no direct flight from like one way back to Malta. But we have you can book on Qatar Airways, you can book on Air France, you can book on KLM. It might be like you might have to transit depending on the airline you choose. But once you book Lagos or like Lagos to Malta, they will you pay you pay for the flight and you see your transit and that's it okay so guys this is all the time we have for today and let me know if i didn't answer some of the burning questions you might still have on the normal permit okay and to the next time we see i want you to keep being happy and also keep improving yourself in any way you can and see you next time ciao ciao